it's me. I'm going to show you how to check the connections on the contactors and other important things inside one of these here electric car chargers. Uh, if you're not comfortable taking this apart, you have absolutely no business doing this sort of work. So stop watching now. But at any rate, don't try this at home. First thing you need to do before you not try this at home is to unplug it. Definitely unplug it. This is the type of work where you're actually going to be putting a screwdriver onto a connector that would otherwise be live, unplug it. Okay, next thing, take it apart. I pulled out the screws, boom, there it is. Aha, that reveals more screws. I'm gonna show you how to do this on two different chargers, by the way, but the part that you're looking for here is called a contactor. Contactors are relay, which is probably not gonna mean a lot to, well, um, okay, let me break this down. It is a switch that is controlled um, by uh, an electromagnet down in here. So you put electricity in here and it turns this magnet on that pulls this switch down, clunk, clunk, clunk. You can see that little thing moving in there. That's just an auxiliary contactor. But what that does is when this is getting power, a little bit of power, this goes clunk and it allows electricity to flow in one side from your plug, boom, out to your car. And so you can see these things right here the actual contacts and these have these little screw doohickeys here and these terminals are what you actually have to check to see if they're tight enough so I'm gonna show you how to do it and like magic there it is the guts Okay, so this 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 her is your contactor. This is where all of the the action happens, where the rubber meets the road. And you definitely want to get in there and make sure that that bugger and that bugger and that bugger and that bugger are tight. These ones here, these are less important. This is just a signal to like see that the contactor has actually moved or been physically triggered. Uh, it's part of a safety system. Down here is a fuse. You want to check that. And then down in here is a power block where the actual power comes in. I just like to call it another point of failure. Um, and you want to check that too. Now, this is my backup charger, so I happen to know that everything in here is pretty tight. Um, but I'm just going to show you how to do it anyways. Now, all of these things have a special like torque rating on them, and it might not say on the device, um, but suffice to say, um, if it's loose, you need to tighten it. So, oh yeah, look at this one. It's uh, 45 inch pounds. Um, you probably don't have the right screwdriver for this. I certainly don't. Um, but uh, you should know what something uh, is, you know, when it's too loose, it should be pretty obvious. So let's uh, go through the procedure. Okay, so here's your contactor, and here's a fancy screwdriver that I'm just going to use because it was expensive. And you just want to make sure that everything's nice and tight. Yeah, it is. Okay, that's happy. Yep, yeah, good. And what you don't want is like to go in and like to easily just be able to finger tighten in another eighth of an inch. I mean, eighth of a turn or whatever. I wonder if these do a Robertson drive or not. No, not those ones. But anyways, you definitely want to check that contactor. Okay, so you want to check your fuse contacts right here, right? Make sure that those are nice and tight. Great. Wonderful. That's great. Those are tight because I tightened them. Okay, so now inside here you've got this power input block, right? So you've got your two hots, and I guess there's a ground. Actually, the ground goes right to the chassis over there. And anyways that you want to check too. So yeah, just get in there. Are they tight? Yeah, great. Everything's good. Check. Now check these ones too. They're on the other side. Tight. Come on. Yep, that's good. And then you'll notice over here, there's another screw. If you can see it right there. You want to make sure that that's nice and tight too. And it looks like I got that. Okay, that's basically all there is to it uh, inside the machine itself. Now here's a homebrew rig right here, which is obviously powered down, but you can see it's got a plexiglass face and there's the contactor in there. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a try and see how 
that one is uh, holding up. This is the one that I use every day, and so it has a lot more thermal cycling, and it is a lot more likely to become loose. Okay, and magically it's open. Um, so this is the set of wires coming in, and this is going out to the, uh, the plug. Um, there's a the little controller down there. It's an open EVSC. And this does everything the Blink uh, unit does, and more, probably. So, let's give it a try here. Make sure that's nice and... Sorry, no tripod here. Yep, perfect. Perfect. Try the output side. Come on, baby, focus. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. And, uh, Bob's your uncle. This thing's been fine. Um... So, mission accomplished. I suppose I should probably check the grounding lugs, but they don't thermal cycle as much. And so I am less worried about that. But since we're in here, why not? Yeah, tight. <laughs> Tighten that down a little bit, I suppose. Not the end of the world. That one's fine. It's fine. Perfect. All right, so now here's the fun part. You might want to clean this foolish thing right here, and I use one of these little, like, tiny, like, pipe cleanery type of things. This is what used for cleaning baby bottles. So you just want to kind of get down in there. These are your two power pins, and this one doesn't get used a lot, so it's covered in cobwebs, but just kind of get down in there. Sometimes you can use um, a little bit of alcohol. I suppose technically you could use um, contact cleaner, which is potentially some really harsh stuff. I don't know what contact cleaner is going to do to the gaskets and stuff in there. I mean, in theory, it should be fine. Um, these two pins right here, not a lot of juice goes over these. Uh, it's just like a signaling, uh, like plug, plug present and a pilot signal and things like that. Um, those can still get dirty, but my little cleaner is not small enough to get down in there, but they're not carrying a lot of current. So um, if they're screwed up or dirty, they could still cause the charger to not work, but it's not going to set the um, car on fire if it doesn't so yeah the other thing you're gonna want to do is get in here and clean this out you know your high voltage and this stuff right here um, I just use one of these little pipe cleanery type of bottle brush cleaner and just kinda get in clean around all the connectors use your pilot and your ground pin and the high voltage pins get in around there too clean them up if you have a can of compressed air or an air compressor, you could also get in there and blow out some of the debris, but it's actually going to make things uh, unplug and plug in uh, more smoothly. And you see there was a little bit of crud in there, and now that crud is not going to be part of the electrical circuit, so that's good.